one thing I want to do is give you a little bit of t uh, tips on working in Packet Tracer. One problem that I always tend to, to have to deal with is one of motivation. Uh, when I am looking at these uh, Packet Tracer labs and thinking, oh, I need to get started on this, or I need to get started working on this particular lab, uh, but I'm just going to kind of stare at the layout a little bit, and I may never actually um, make it. It tends to be a little less interactive, and my eyes glaze over, and then the next thing you know, I'm an hour into this, right? So I want to give you some tips on making the most of your um, Packet Tracer Lab experience with some tools that are included with Packet Tracer that you may have never seen. And that's going to be in the view menu. So um, this is kind of how you set up your desktop to begin work on a particular lab. And there's two little things here. One is the um, viewport. And this makes a smaller um, and it usually starts out about that big, but you can move it and make it a little bit bigger. This is the smaller view of this workspace right here. So one thing to notice is that each device is named something in the workspace. So this S1 right here, this is a label. Um, it is a label for that switch. It is not um, the same as the host name. And when the switches are made, they usually are the same name. Like if I looked at this switch right here, its host name would be S1 uh, by default. But it, this is just a label. And so uh, we'll distinguish that in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and go to view again and look at what's called the workspace list. Now that pulled up the workspace list. And here, and so if I minimize the big window, I'm going to go ahead and put my viewport right there. I'm going to put my workspace list right there. And here's a nice spot for my for my instructions, which I can make larger and I can go through the process. Now, I may still want to go in and actually select this because uh, I'm, I'm going to fill out this chart, right? So I can go and um, start up a Word document and actually do some documentation right here, okay? So that's, that's one thing. But this gets me more in the, um, in the mode of being able to work. Um, so when I click on this, um, I, I don't get the same interactivity like I did before. Uh, so I'm, I'm clicking on the switch and notice nothing popping up. Uh, and that's because the actual pop-up controls are listed in this workspace view. So when I hold my mouse over it, I get to see the same summary that I could see before uh, with the configuration. Uh, but if I click my mouse right there, I'm going to click. And now I get the actual configuration window. Uh, that I can configure the device with. So if I had uh, if I had a configuration um, listed here over the uh, right in this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy the configuration. What I like to do when I copy that configuration is I go all the way to the end and I select up because this will scroll. And I'll go all the way to the um, to that uh, first command, and I'm going to copy it. And this is, this is what I do when I go in um, and paste this in a text document, right? So this would be where I would start um, modifying the commands on the on the um, switch or router, if you if it is that. Um, and then I could easily paste that in. If one of those uh, lines changed, for instance, if I wanted to use the um, login local command instead of login, uh, I could do that. And write my configuration. And close it. I'm still back to my main window. I can configure something else. Maybe I want to configure the IP addresses. Um, so that it gives me the ability to really get um, interactive with this in a different way. Um, and also, I can go ahead and add cables and remove cables right here. So if I wanted to add, say, a console cable between PC1 
and the PC2, I would choose the port and then I would choose the destination device. So let's say switch one and I got to go ahead and choose the console port and I'm going to hit connect. Notice that my screen automatically changes. So I have this um, cable plugged in right here. I can see it. Um, it's plugged in between PC1 and 2. Um, and if I went and went into the terminal, I would at that point be looking at the switch, switch one. Now, what I'm going to do really quickly is I'm going to go ahead and change the host name of the switch. And so now, now I change the host name of the switch. And one thing that doesn't change here is that the label that's attached to this switch one, the host name switch one, doesn't change. It's still S1 in the, in the topology. And it's still S1 right here. If I wanted to change the label on the device, I'd have to go back to my main packet tracer window. And I have to change the label. And once I did that, now I can see that what would happen is the label changes here. And, of course, it also changes right here in the terminal. Right. So... It's all, it, I'm sorry, in the, it changes in the workspace. So that's um, that's the difference between, between the host name and the label. But I think that you would find that this particular way of working interactively actually is a little more. Um, uh, it's a little. It's a little more. Um, it runs faster, right? So I'm constantly able to move on to the next thing. Look at what's going on my mind is able to keep up with what is on the screen um, which may be which may be one thing that keeps you from um, completing the list of labs um, in, a, in a quick way